Most people don't know that you're considered a cancer survivor at the moment of diagnosis. It wasn't always this way. 60 years ago, a cancer diagnosis was a death sentence. And if you did survive, you were left to figure out the rest of your life on your own. There was no, what now? Or, what next? But some patients demanded something different. Something better. My name is Matthew Zachary, and this is The Cancer Mavericks. A deep dive narrative into the people who fought for better treatment, forced doctors to listen, and pushed America to see the human side of the disease. To learn more and listen, go to cancermavericks.com and follow this series wherever you get your podcasts. The blood and semen can be excessive masturbation, obviously recent procedure. And then we can talk about lump on your testicle and uh, varicocele, hernia. We should also let people know how many testicles they should have. <laughs> yeah. Hey everyone, it's Dr. Chris Kelly. And I'm Dr. Mark Eisenberg. And we are here to answer the age old question Am I dying? All right, today we are going to talk about a topic that is going to make Mark blush, I'm sure. Yes, I'm and he's going to have to figure out a way to prevent his mother from hearing this episode, lest he die of embarrassment. Well, this but, episode really, you know, fortunately it seems sexist, but this episode's really just for men, right? Yeah, well, it's for men and the women who care about men uh, and care for men. And so I think that's a pretty broad audience, but we're talking about testicles today. And so this is not pornography. People know, okay? If you came here for sexual arousal, you will be severely disappointed uh, over the next few minutes. This is going to be a review of all the things that can go wrong with testicles and when you should worry about them and when you should just brush them off and wait for them to get better. Brush them off? I don't know. You really are starting to like, you know. Don't, don't brush off your testicles. Okay, so let's just talk about the testicles real quick. So I think most people know basically what they do. They produce uh, male sex hormones to testosterone, they produce sperm, and they convey those sperm back up to the penis uh, during ejaculation. And they uh, mostly just get in the way and hurt when you get kicked in them or get a uh, ball thrown in them and uh, all that. Mark, anything you want to add on that front? No, but there's two. Try to make sure pe most people have two. You only have two? <laughs> Actually, go on. I'm so some interesting trivia about the testicles. Uh, they actually start during your fetal development inside your body, in your pelvis, it kind of like where the eggs are for women, like the ovaries. And then they actually descend down through the pelvis, out of the pelvis, into the scrotum, outside the body. And you'd think like, why would they do that? Why would nature put this thing that is so crucial to reproduction and therefore to evolution outside the body where it is susceptible to the damage of the world instead of like ensconcing it deep inside the pelvis where it's protected. So why is it, Mark? Temperature. Yeah, te I, th I think that's the answer. I think it's just temperature. It's so temperature. What, what's, yeah, what's the issue? Because actually sperm production has to be at a certain temperature. So... That's so weird, right? Like you'd think that evolution would figure out a way to make sperm at the internal body temperature rather than drop these things outside of the body where, you know, a dog can bite them off. But Go figure. Is that one of your big worries in life? <laughs> well, I don't, I don't play with dogs naked. Don't you, but, wear, <laughs> don't you but, wear clothes in your you house? Know, you know, pants are a relatively recent inter invention in the grand scheme of things. And so for a long time, you know, those guys were really vulnerable to the slings and arrows of mm -hmm. the world. <laughs> I, I don't know. But this was the best solution nature could come up with. But it's definitely temperature. And that's why people, if they ever just want to experiment, you know, that's why, you know, the when you get cold or it's freezing outside, actually there's contraction and the testicles move closer to your body to then get some of the heat of the body. Right. And when it's hot, they, they move farther away. Which is why, for example, if you want to examine your testicles, for example, to see if you have a lump, you should do it after a warm bath because that's when the scrotum is the most relaxed because the testicles are trying to get away from your hot uh, inner core. So mm -hmm. for what that's worth. So I just think that's kind of weird. I don't know. So so it's interesting because anatomically, you you see 
remnants of the fact that the testicles have gone on this long journey, the vein that drains the testicles is nothing like the vein that drains the skin and everything everywhere else. It goes all the way back up towards the kidneys because that's where the testicles originally sat. And so they've got this like long trail behind them all the way into the body leading up towards the kidneys. So mm -hmm. just one of those weird things. But there might be other evolutionary reasons why the testicles are outside the body. I mean, can you imagine if women had like little bags of ovaries hanging off their body? That'd be so weird. Let's hope none of our listeners are really <laughs> spending the next 10 minutes imagining that. <laughs> We're going to get a call. <laughs> so go on. So, so <laughs> let's, let's talk about some of the things that can go wrong with testicles. Let's, let's first talk with, about lumps on the testicle. Yeah. So, so obviously, obviously, every young guy in their 20s and 30s, when it's the most common time people would get this, are concerned about testicular cancer. It right. can be horrible. I actually, it's the saddest thing. One of my high school classmates died of testicular cancer in his 20s. That's horrible, but that's pretty, I mean, the one thing about testicular cancer, especially if caught fairly early, and even sometimes when it's caught late, it usually has a 95 or above percent cure rate, right? I mean, it's a very good cure rate for something so horrible. I think so, but I you got to catch not, it. I guess I have to watch what I say. Unfortunately, it's not very good for the 5% who don't, but I think it might actually be even more like a 98 or a 99% cure rate, right? That's why it's important to check. Let us point out that to our listeners that Mark is not a urologist or oncologist and doesn't actually know what he's talking about. <laughs> hopefully he's right. So so testicular lumps, obviously you wanna you wanna get through your life without having one. So then the question becomes how do you know when you have one and should you self examine? I don't think that there's a clear consensus. You're on not exactly... self examining right now, are you? <laughs> well, <laughs> Don't we want to speak from experience? Are your pants still on? <laughs> Mark, you're doing a great disservice to our listeners. I know. Anyway, I think it's, I don't think there's any clear, widely accepted recommendation about how often a man should self examine, but I think most will agree that you should do it periodically, however you want to define that. And Mark, why don't you take us through your shower routine and exactly how you how you play with yourself? Well, I have OCD, so my shower routine is like two and a half hours twice a day. No, I'm kidding. No, but the best time to actually, you know, I know like with women with breast exams, they always say the best time to do it is like during your period, because at least you know, you know, you know at that that time it's like once a month, and to do it in a warm shower. Um, the truth is you should try to do it like once a month and examine your testicles and get familiar with what they're supposed to feel like. That way, when there is a problem, you'll notice there's a difference. I mean, there's a lot of components in the testicles. It's not just the testicle. There's also like the, you know, the veins and stuff uh, around it and the vast deference and these other stuff that could also feel lumpy and stuff too, right? Yeah. So let's, let's talk about one of those things right now. So everybody has on their testicle something called the epididymis. And that is a normal that's structure. A that's a different word than epidermis. Yes. Do not show the world your epididymis. You will be arrested. But you can show the world your epidermis. So the epididymis is a thing that is hard to spell. And it is also part of the testicle where sperm collects. And I think it's right before it kind of gets transmitted off outside of the scrotum. But you, you might be able to feel that on one part of each testicle. It's kind of a slightly firm area. That's normal. And you should probably become aware of, of that so that you know what that is. And so you don't worry about it when you, you know, discover it later. So, so that's the epididymis. And then as you point out, there's also veins all around the testicles. And in some people, those can become enlarged and sort of bulgy and even in extreme cases, kind of like a bag of worms, uh, that's called a, a, a varicocele. And that usually has something to do with, I think, blockage of the vein kind of downstream, sort of somewhere inside the body, uh, kind of as it crisscrosses other blood vessels. Uh, so that can happen. And that's not going to feel like a mass or a lump per se, but just kind of like a baggy, weird feeling, usually on just one side of the scrotum. Mm -hmm. That's important, actually, because it's not just a cosmetic and annoying thing, but actually having those dilated veins in the scrotum can heat up the testicles and cause infertility. Yeah. So it's something that you should probably deal with if you're having any trouble, uh, you know, reproducing. No, definitely. That's why it gets repaired or fixed. If it's one causing pain or two, it's, it's interfering with fertility. Of note, if you can't reproduce because, like Mark, no one is willing to do it with you, then that's, yeah, that's not different. likely to be from the varicocele. <laughs> that's <different. But laughs> infertility. It's it's one of the different causes. But you know, I'm working on my smile these days, so we'll see. 
a killer smile will solve a lot of problems, my friend. But the, the testicles should feel, when you actually feel your testicles, especially in a warm shower or bath, they should feel smooth and totally round and obviously be symmetric. Um, well, I don't know about totally round. I think they're a little more ovoid. No, 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 but they should be smooth, like, you know, smooth. Like, you know, yeah. you know a lump usually is pretty obvious from what I, you know. So another uh, cause of a lump is a hernia. Do you want to tell the kind people what a hernia is? No. No, you don't? You want to just listen like a passive? Okay, so then I'll do it. So a hernia is when some of your guts, your intestine, actually kind of slips through the canal. Ugh, so rem ugh, remember ugh, ugh, I'm sorry, that's remember, why I want to talk about it. Remember how I said the testicles took this journey during your development from your pelvis down into your scrotum? So they, they left behind them a canal. And other things can go down that canal like your intestines. And if a piece of your intestines gets in there, uh, it will – Cause that's not that is the definition of a hernia, and it can cause a noticeable lump. Often, that lump gets worse if you cough or bear down because your diaphragm is pushing down on your guts, and it can kind of push it further in there. And uh, that's that's one way that we detect that, that it's a hernia. But there's many different types of hernias. There's umbilical hernias. Yeah, there's, yeah, yeah. Know, this is this, just one type. This is inguinal. Yeah. So that that's a uh, that's a direct inguinal hernia. If I my medical school education is serving me correctly, and mm -hmm. and that can cause a, a bulge in your scrotum that gets and worse it, when you. That's bear why it the out. doctor like sort of touches an area and then has you cough to see if anything sort of protrudes out while you're coughing. Yeah, don't do that for anyone but your doctor. Okay. <laughs> I agree. I don't know why my doorman keeps insisting. <laughs> On that extremely disturbing note, uh, we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to talk about one of Mark's favorite topics, which is blood in your semen. You won't yes. want to miss it. Stay tuned. You will. Hello there, Andrew. Hey, Matt. How you doing? I'm doing fine. How are you? I'm a little verklempt. I think, you know, with COVID being over, it's a little stressful. Are you experiencing anxiety? I mean, I think, A, I'm Jewish. B, I'm in New York. C, yes. <laughs> but anxiety is a chronic condition, right? It is. It is. It's a, it's a condition that needs to be maintained over time, and there's no one solution to it, is there? You know, this guy I was uh, walking past on 7th Avenue said I should just dunk my head into a pickle jar. Is that a treatment for anxiety? Well, that is uh, the opinion of one man. And if I were you, I'd, I'd look to benefit from a slightly wider swath of people's experiences. Not the pickle jar recommender on 7th Avenue. Yeah, I, I, I don't think I'd, I'd recommend a pickle jar as a solution to anxiety. More for cucumbers. Maybe in the direction of cucumbers or possibly in an entirely different direction. Tell me more. Well, I have actually been looking through this rather remarkable platform called StuffThatWorks.Health. Dot health? Dot health. Not dot com. It dot net, ends dot whatever. in a dot .health, stuff that works dot .health. Very curious and very interesting. They've got over 1.3 million people who are contributing their own information about experiences that they've had with their chronic conditions, over 400 different chronic conditions. And all the information is crowdsourced together there and put into a format that's useful for people experiencing chronic conditions like you. So more likely so there's no guy recommending a pickle juice barrel for my anxiety. At the very worst, that advice is going to be surrounded by much better advice. StuffThatWorks.Health? StuffThatWorks.Health. All right, we're back. Uh, we are talking about the testicles and the many ailments that can affect them. We spent the first half of the show talking about testicular lumps, and I think Mark is curled up in the fetal position. Yeah, I'm still getting over some of the words you used. It's fucking down. You used, like, ejaculation <laughs> and scrotum. So, like, now I actually like... never said the word ejaculation, but I'm about to because the topic for the second half of our show is blood in the semen. What happens uh, when you ejaculate and a unwelcome color appears? Uh, so, Mark, why don't you lead the way on this one and, and tell us about uh, – why, why would I lead the way? I've never had that. Have you? <laughs> no. Thankfully, I haven't. I, I'm not really going to talk about my ejaculation history anymore with you or anyone ever. But it is – I mean I have a several patients a year calling me up frantic because they notice blood in their semen. I'm guessing this is because you prescribe blood thinners to them. <laughs> well, besides that, but these are younger people. But my first question is always like, why were you staring at it? Mark, come on. I'm kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but obviously, it's good to like know your body. But blood in the semen is much more common than people think, don't you think? Yeah, it, it, it happens. And 
most of the time it's actually benign. Uh, it, it seems like a really scary thing, and, and sometimes it can be, but most of the time there is nothing dangerous happening. Yeah, exactly. It does really scare people, but uh, it's usually a small vessel that's just sort of like, you know, broke off a little. Like, like... So one of my favorite memories from medical school was uh, in my ER rotation as a med student, I saw a young man no more than 25 years of age, who said that the reason that he came in to the ER was blood in his nut. And I was a very naive medical student back then, and I just wasn't in the right frame of mind. And I was like, blood in your nut? Like, are you like a chestnut, a walnut? And he's like, no, 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 like- Maybe you were hungry. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, okay, okay, okay. And so I got a early crash course as a med student on all the different causes. And by far, actually, one of the most common causes is excessive masturbation. Did you know that? Did you know that there was such a thing as excessive masturbation? <laughs> What's your definition of excessive? <laughs> I have a feeling it's different from yours. Yeah, but people want to know. But any, anyway, you're causing trauma to the area. <laughs> yeah, so if, if you ejaculate many times per day, you can kind of just wear out the pipes a little bit and uh, they can bleed a little bit. So, so that is, that's one cause. You can also have a burst capillary anywhere, actually, really, between your testicle and your, the tip of your penis, including in the urethra and the penis itself. And so I think that if it happens... If you masturbate a lot, well, first of all, kudos to you for finding the time, but you should maybe just cool off for a day or two, let things settle, and then try again, and hopefully it'll go away. And if it doesn't come back, then I don't think there's anything to worry about. No, but you should mention it to your doctor next time you see your doctor. Yeah. You know? And if it, does, if it does happen again, you probably should go see somebody because there could be other causes of this that we, we need to address. Exactly. So if it becomes a recurring issue, then it definitely needs to be checked out no matter what age you are. You know, you're probably going to end up getting a scrotal ultrasound, making sure that your testicles are okay. If you're on a blood thinner, mm -hmm. for example, because you have a history of blood clots or atrial fibrillation or something else, they're going to work you up and make sure that there's no reason that you're bleeding. And, and then if but but you're more like you're but you're more likely to have it. Like in younger people, excessive masturbation is probably a cause for the benign reason for this. But in older people, just being on a blood thinner is probably the most common reason for a benign reason for this. Right. Although a blood thinner can unmask a not benign reason. Exactly. And you could have a tumor or something that was just silently sitting there, and all of a sudden on the blood thinner, it, you were yeah. lucky. You're on the blood thinner. Yeah. So, so that's something to think about. Uh, another thing worth pointing out, if it's not your only symptom, so if you have blood in your ejaculate, but you also have pelvic pain yeah, or pain different. when you urinate, that's a different story. You probably have a prostate infection or some exactly. prostate issue in that case. And uh, that obviously needs to be checked out. And maybe you, you can take a course of antibiotics to see if it gets better. And the, pro the prostate for everybody is another gland uh, closer to the, you know, inside your body, closer to uh, between the testicles and the penis that actually provide lubrication and a lot of other stuff. But that's what people are all worried about, the prostate getting enlarged or prostate cancer. But um, that, in case people don't know what the prostate is. So those are... I think the main things to think about, if it's a one-off event, then just give it a little time. And if it doesn't happen again, I don't think you need to worry. But if it if it keeps happening, you definitely need to get checked out, even if you're young, because young people are actually among the most frequent victims of testicular cancer. Mm -hmm. And certainly if you have other symptoms, pelvic pain, pain with urination, anything like that, then you definitely need to be checked out for a possible infection or cancer. Yeah, because it could be, it could be besides a urinary tract infection, it could also be, you know, a sexually transmitted disease like gonorrhea and chlamydia yeah exactly so whatever happened to your patient in the ER? oh he he masturbated like 10 times a day <laughs> all he did was smoke weed eat pizza and masturbate he was living the dream that is the dream i i think that hopefully by now he's gotten a job and moved on with his life and his semen is a normal color i am sure that he, uh if he knew that we were talking about him he would be horrified but he'll remain nameless <laughs> Anyway, so that was a... Is this really your patient or your brother? <laughs> it's my patient. Um, my brother would never tell me if he had that problem ever. <laughs> so uh, hopefully for the guys listening out there or the, the gals taking care of the guys or the guys taking care of the guys or, or anyone out there who has testicles in their lives that are important to them, this was a helpful episode on when to, when to worry, when not to worry, some of the things that can go wrong. Mark, anything else you want to add here? Nope, I think that's pretty uh, good. And you could also check out our book. We have a whole thing on, on testicles, don't we? Yes, and maybe next time we'll talk about that thing hanging by the testicles. Uh, 
how many letters? Well, I'm trying to guess what it is. Give me another hint. Uh, you'll have to just wait till the next episode to find out. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Have a great day. If you like the show, be sure to subscribe, leave a review, follow us on social, and tell all your friends to listen. Am I Dying is a production of Offscript Media. Our executive producer is Matthew Zachary. Andrew McDowell is our senior producer. Devin Tun is our production intern. Am I Dying is recorded, mixed, and edited by Ariel Nachman. For advertising and media inquiries, email media at offscript.com. Hit us up at contact at offscript.com to share comments and feedback. For more information, visit offscript.com.